I'm going to tell you how I cooled my Gold Shell Mini Dose 3 Plus within an hour of getting it. But first, I'm going to take you through an unboxing so you can see what you get, how to use the Gold Shell Find tool to locate the miner, configuring the miner via the web page, how I killed it, can you get the advertised performance, the new Gold Shell Hub Cloud Management System, the mobile app, and lastly, whether this is a good buy or not. Let's start by unboxing this Gold Shell Mini Dose 3 Plus. I can see there's an instruction manual in the, uh, in the top of the box. Let's have a quick look at it. Hmm, I see it's talking about the Mini Dose 2 here rather than the 3 Plus. It's talking about it having two sets of PowerPoints. Uh, this one's meant to have a single external PowerPoint. So it looks like the manual hasn't been updated or shipped. All the right wrong manual's been shipped with this box, but let's carry on. Let's see on the compartment here, we've got a power cord and a little Wi-Fi antenna. All right, let's pull out the main unit. The unit has a built-in power supply for a change, built-in Ethernet port, and that's obviously the Wi-Fi adapter. We can also see it has a little SD card slot and there's a system, uh, lights labeled system red and green little reset button and an IP locator button. An easy way to find your miner is to plug it in via ethernet, open a website and simply type in find.goldshell.com. It will quickly scan and find all the gold shell miners you've got. And from there, you can simply click on the settings button to open the web page. You can also use the app Gold Shell Zone on your mobile device to locate your miner. When it first opens up, the page will be in Chinese. So you need to click on the top right hand corner here and select English. The next thing you'll need to do is unlock the miner to be able to configure it. The default password is 12345678 From here you want to click on miner and then add pool. I've tried out a couple of these pools and I personally prefer F2 pool. I think it's the most straightforward one to use. So if you just click on whatever pool you're going to use and then the miner name and password. You can choose the power plan here whether you want to go for maximum hash rate or low power mode. And the default sensor's here, so temperature monitor shuts down the miner if it gets too hot. And there's a little LED indicator that if you've got lots of miners, you can turn that on to help locate them. And lastly, you've got the algorithm plan, although there is only one option, since S-Script is used for both Litecoin and Dogecoin. On the system page, you can enable DHCP or a static config, same with DNS. You have the option to configure the Wi-Fi and join the network here and you can also enable cloud control. Um, note when you do this, you have to put an API key in from the Gold Shell Hub. We'll have a look at that later. If you use the mobile app, it'll auto configure this for you with just a single click. Lastly, here's an option to let you change the password. You can update the firmware from here as well. Uh, and also uh, factory reset the device. Back to the home page, so it tells you the status of the miner. This one's been running for two and a two and a half days or so. So you can see the average speed, fam speeds, uh, error rates, um, the max temperature, and your firmware version. Uh, you've got a chart of the hash rate, and then there's two hash blades inside of it, and you can see the performance of each one. Um, notably for me, one of the hash boards is always much hotter than the other. I presume that's just the way it's designed. Now it's time to talk about how I killed my miner. So the next thing that was all working, I thought I'd check for new firmware versions. So I noted it's version, version 2.2. So I went across to the God Shell page on how to do firmware upgrades, gave me a link to download new ones. So I went across to the um, GitHub and it has all the firmware. So I dived into Dogecoin and Litecoin Miner and got all the way down to Mini Dose 3. I noticed it's not a Mini Dose 3 Plus, but I thought that's pretty close. So I went in there and I see it's got a version 2.23, one slightly newer than mine. So I downloaded this, upgraded the miner, and it left it dead. Unbootable, just with a red flashing light. So whatever you do, if you get the 3 Plus, do not use the 3 firmware. So I had to email the support people and they sent me a new image which I flashed to an SD card and then I booted off that to re-image the Mini Dose 3 Plus and then I had to reset the whole thing up again to get it going. Okay, let's look at if we can get what's advertised. So Gold Shell advertised that this unit has a default hash rate of 810 mega hash a second plus or minus 5%. So bearing in mind this has been running for couple two and a half days so it should be well averaged in so the miner itself is reporting just under 805 mega hash a second which is wealth in that plus or minus five percent 
Um, however, the pool has got some quite different numbers here. It's saying the 24 hour hash rate, hash rate is 830 mega hash a second, although it is a bit lumpy up and down. So it's hard to uh, decide which one you trust here, the pool that's paying you at 830 or the miner that's reporting 805 or the advertised rate at 810. Let's move on to the gold shell hub. This is a, a really good tool. So you get to it at hub.goldshell.com and this lets you manage all your gold shell miners running 2.2 or better firmware from the cloud. You can both monitor and configure them. So on the hash page, uh, sorry, on the home page, it shows you um, percentage of miners online and offline, your total profits and the different coins. Under miner management is where you do the configuration. So we're going to start by looking at templates first. So templates have um, common configurations such as pools. So once you've got that done, you can come back to miner list and it shows you all your miners and whether they're offline and you can select them and then you can go set templates. So for instance, you can configure all your miners to use one pool. Uh, miners can be grouped together and you can also set the hash rate mode from here. You also have the option of doing rebooting. Um, you can see here, you can also factory reset it, upgrade the firmware from here, which I'll only be doing via this process now, so as I try not to um, destroy another one, and you can set the power mode. I presume this is to give away this miner to another account. Operation log keeps a, change, a record of all the changes you've made. Product info tells you all about the other gold shell miners in case you feel like splashing some money and buying some more. I see it does let you... Um, uh, it does tell what the profit is, although it has a very unrealistically low power price for home miners. So you will need to bump this up to whatever it costs you at your own home to see what it is. Account settings is where you get the API key that you put into the miner to make it cloud managed. Although I found it much easier using the mobile app because it just has a one click button that lets you um, cloud manage it. Just going back to miner list, you can also click on the miner and it gives you all sorts of detailed, uh, click on the IP address and it gives you all sorts of detailed information about how it's going, hash rates, temperatures, configurations, etc. I think this system's absolutely brilliant because you can now monitor your gold shell and configure your gold shell miners from anywhere. I've found the gold shell zone app that you run on your mobile device to be really good. It's fully functional. Everything you can do on the web page, you can also do on the mobile app. So you could potentially operate one of these gold shell mini miners using nothing more than a mobile phone. Okay, let's look at value for money. So this unit is currently selling at $759 and it's July 2024. And if we look at the price of Doge, it's currently around 12 cents. So if we took our $759 and just simply bought the Doge, we'd have around 6,300 Doge. Now it also does merge mine Litecoin, but for me, it's mostly Dogecoin I'm interested in. If we go over and look at the pool, you can see I'm currently earning around 9.2 Doge a day. Now this number will go down over the coming months and years as the hash rate increases. So this is like, as good as it gets and it will drop. So we go back to the calculator and we put in our 6325 Doge we could have bought if we just bought the Doge rather than the miner and divide it by the 9.2 Doge we make a day. We can see it would take 687 days to break even if we just simply did the purchase. If you look at the Dogecoin difficulty change over the last three years, so it's gone from around sort of difficulty of you know 4 million to 17 million, so it's basically quadrupled. I think you could reasonably expect that this miner may well take, um, could well take five years to mine the same amount of Dogecoin if you just simply took the money and bought it right now. So if you're purely just interested in profit and have no interest in mining for a hobby, I don't think it makes a great deal of sense to buy the miner for Doge. You just should simply buy the Doge. So how do I think you could make money with this miner? Well, if we look back in the previous bull run, we can see that it spent a bit of time above the 30 cents mark. So for me, I'm going to mine and hold, uh, hoping for it to hit 30 cents again. And in the previous year, that was basically April, previous bull run, April to June. So there's a three month period. So if you add four years onto that, that should mean roughly April through June, sometime around then in 2025, that would be a good point to exit the Doge that's been mined. Now, the 
price of Dogecoin miners is directly related to the price of Doge. So as Doge doubles in price, so does the miners. So reasonably from here, the price will almost triple. So a $1,500 US, um, sorry, a $750 US Dogecoin miner may well be in the $1,500 to $2,000 to buy in the height of the bull run. So I'm personally hoping to sell my machine for around $1,000 mark. So as soon as it crosses that 30 cents, I'll put it up for sale for $1,000. So hopefully I'll make all my money back plus another $250. And then I'll sell all the Doge I've also earned as a bit of um, cream on the top. So do I think this machine is a good buy? If it was priced at $500, then that would be quite a reasonable business proposition just to buy, mine and sell. But it's not. It's priced nearly at 50% more, around $750. If you were just interested in making money, it seems a much better and safer option to me to simply buy the Dogecoin right now and then sell that during 2025. If you're interested in a hobby purchase, I think it's a reasonable case because it's not that you can't make money, it's just that it's very hard. Um, and I think probably the optimal strategy for this one is to, like I've suggested, buy and sell the machine in the peak of the bull run and all the Dogecoin. I hope you found that review interesting. I'm going to leave a video around my head and hopefully you'll like that one too.